next speaker before we take a break is Mushtaq Ahmed. And he is the CEO of Nipsis Group. And the title of his presentation is Measuring and Managing Business Outcomes. Please give Mushtaq a, a round of applause. Thank you. Good morning. Is microphone okay? Okay, good morning. My name is Mushtaq Ahmed, uh, and I started this company called Nipsis almost 11 years back in Swaziland. Then apparently I was actually doing a lot of innovation and also working both hardware and software and developing and solving the problems in Swaziland, apparently in few in South Africa, lesser too. Originally I'm from Bangladesh, so I also opened in there and I was solving some problem there. Then we have an uh, option to work with Singapore. So right now we're working in Singapore and a bit in Australia. But uh, what I'm actually, uh, over the period of time, I actually learned we need to know more how to adopt the new technology and building solution based on the new technology. That's why I, in 2009, I went to Harvard uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, to do my master's in IT. So I did that master's in IT. And while I was exploring in Harvard, I found a lot of things that we can do which are needed in Africa rather than the United States. So after completing my master's, I returned back to again in South Africa. I live in South Africa and also doing uh, my business and my innovation around South Africa. So today my topic is one of the biggest problems that I found. We don't believe that much of statistics. We don't do that much of maths. My kids are in the South African school. It's not that much of science and maths that we do. That has an impact on everything that we do in South Africa. So we, have, we don't have effective measuring and manage, managing techniques, and IoT can actually solve those, solve those issues. So I'll be actually presenting at least three use cases in South Africa. I have plenty of use cases in other countries. How we can measure and we can manage the outcome. So I'll be giving you like three different industries. So challenges in South Africa, one of biggest challenge right now, like every department, every organization that you go, they'll say we got less budget than last year because our economy is not growing. So we will have a less budget. Then they will say like facility management, cost is higher because you have to pay more rental. Uh, staff cost is increasing. We have to adjust the cost of living. Service cost, service rendering cost is increasing, especially in the medical and health sector where I work every year, you need to give more money to the doctors. And the supply cost, all the supply cost is also increasing. And customer wants more, or there are more and more patients, more and diseases are coming in. So we are in a, in a, bit, of, uh, in a, in a bit of problem because we don't have money to serve additional customer. At the same time, we have more and more customers are coming with, with, with the better expectation from our government, from the organization. It's everywhere. So if we see in health particularly, there are a lot of issues in the health. I took even health informatics. Uh, I worked on like uh, DICOM and radiology and uh, a lot of those uh, high tech things. But when I came back in Africa, I found we got like some simple problems. Problems is we don't know who is doing what. And we don't have any attendance register. Attendance register is like, uh, like 70s way of doing the attendance registration. We got overtime and then commuted overtime. Some overtime is just giving them the people because it's to satisfy them. Then we don't have any service scheduling. We don't know like which uh, doctor or even sometimes if we know like uh, scheduling, electronic scheduling in, in uh, medicine and hospital care is available since 1975. But we don't have necessary means and technology. It's a very simple thing. To do it, we don't have schedules for the patients. So patients coming from far villages and they're coming and pouring into the, uh, our hospitals and it is making a very difficult job to provide the service. Some of those HIV patients, diabetic patients, I found like they're waiting for eight, nine hours to get their chronic medication which can be dispensed at their closest point. So these are the challenges in, in, in our healthcare and there are very few things 
few IoT staff can actually solve these big problems. And my estimation, I have a lot of maths. I decided not to show you too much maths here. So if we can actually achieve even 10% efficiency on our health. Imagine our biggest budget is going into the health. And if we can gain 10% efficiency by putting little device with a little money of investment, and, and, and that can actually do a wonderful job. So second problem is on our customer care. We have challenges in customer care. Every time I go FNB for something, I wait. They're one of the superior customer care in the country. Everywhere you go, you have to wait. And everybody wants like hyper customization. I want my customized service. If I go OCBC Bank in Singapore, they know everything. The moment I enter, based on my cell phone number, they know who I am. They can come and talk to me like what I need and they can quickly fix my issues. But in here, they don't know because my services are not customized. We are not actually doing the hyper customization. Customer feedback, they don't collect. Sometimes they collect some feedback, but it's like old way of writing in a book and it's not possible to collect all those feedback. Sometimes it's, we prefer to write it in the Facebook more than writing in a comment in the, in the, but there is no way to collect those Facebook and Twitter feed and into the customer database and also surrounding with the sensors to look at whether that customer came, when he came, what sort of, who was attending. We don't have that mechanism. And we don't have any consistent experience. If you are a business customer, if you are a big money, big car, you will get a different treatment if you are a poor man. So we don't have a consistent experiences of customers. So even uh, different people with different attitude, we don't have that thing because we don't actually manage and monitor and control. So that is in our, in general, in our private sector. Another problem is the warehousing and distribution that I've been working for last almost a year, year with a few warehousing and, so we have problem with the picking and packing. The problems are coming like a lot of different forms. I'm not disclosing those things. But picking and packing is a problem because sometimes aisle is not get replenished. We pick the wrong thing. We, we push it in a wrong package, deliver it, and we have always some challenges. Verification is a problem. Even the verification, how do you verify? So you are scanning the barcode, but it's not scanned, and you just push it away. So there is no way to do that. So we try to make some devices and sensors around that so that you can do that. And the process automation, all those different pieces together, they need to be automated. So this is the area where we worked, and I'll be actually showing some of the things, but today my motto or main theme in the presentation is what gets measured gets managed. We have to think in the IoT mind. Yes, there are many big things, connected cities, connected agriculture, uh, so many things that you can do. But if we can measure using those devices, little devices, not more than 5,000 rand or 2,000 rand, some devices are 200 rand. Even 250 rand device can actually transmit uh, Wi-Fi signal and then actually connect with your uh, light sensor, which is like 2 rand. So it's not actually, price is not, not the factor, but how do you collect that thing? Where are we keeping those things? How we make, make our management decision out of it? So that is my theme in this presentation. So it will give you, again, like IoT gives you like endless possibilities. I was trying to put you like some sort of production possibility frontier map that I learned in the economics. I was an economist, four years I learned in economics, but I'm not going into detail of it. But what is IoT actually coming up? So right now it's like 13 billion connected devices. So two connected devices per person. I'm just quickly brushing through. And by 2020, 50 billion devices will be connected. And every person will have a six devices. And uh, one gigabyte will be our network speed. And by this time, when I'll be finishing the presentation, 30,000 uh, tablet or 3,000 tablets will be sold. So this is the reality. So that gives also, it started with like 2009, 2010, somewhere the inflection point, and it's going at exponentially. So this is the reality. This is the theme what we've been discussing all together. But this gives another op opportunity. If you have a connected devices, you connect with a Wi-Fi. Moment you connect, I know like who you are, I know where you are located. That has a tremendous impact in the organization. You know your employees like suddenly like how long they have been actually spending time on the kitchen or, or, or cafe area, talking with other people, how long they're in the desk. 
We have been getting a lot of, lot of demand in the SCB field manufacturing. How long those people are in different places? So they want to do, it's just like more into uh, surveillance inside the organization. But even if you don't do the surveillance, if you have the information, you'll be able to make like better planning of your uh, uh, space utilization, facilities utilization. I'm talking about without even putting up any of your IoT devices, just scanning all the IoT devices that is in this room, you will be able to tell like uh, who is where, if you are enabled in the Wi-Fi or many other ways. So IoT actually comes up with complexities and it needs to have the connected uh, well, connectivity platform, my previous presenter was discussing, and IoT specific network element. And I do mostly work on the devices and sensors. And the top, which is applications, big data, that is my one of the areas that I've been working for the last past many years. And I've been also teaching on uh, in Harvard occasionally on how to uh, program on the low power devices. Even currently, I'm taking a course in there. So, uh, the data integration, analytics, those are the traditional space of software development we have been doing. But now, if you just rely on somebody's platform, if you have the sensors and devices, then you have like another possibilities. That is like endless possibilities. Solve most of the problem that we are facing today on the public service delivery to the health problem, to the education problem, all the problems in South Africa that we have been facing, we can solve it. And it is possible to solve. It's a huge window of opportunity came up. But when we are solving the uh, opportunities, we need to also make sure like it's secured. So let's coming back to our solution. So one of the thing, uh, I was actually working with this uh, concept of uh, sensors and devices. So I was thinking like these sensors and devices, it works, some of those things are almost like a radar. So we decided to develop four different radars. So one we call is people radar. That usually uh, collects like all the uh, Wi-Fi MAC addresses. Like there is one innovative customer in Singapore. They're saying like, no, you need to collect the TIMZ for, for uh, our customers who are coming to our metro station. So we can also collect the TIMZs. We can locate the people. We can deliver and we can manage the services based on how they are looking for. So what we did in uh, South Africa with People Radar, we found like People Radar and we had an ERP system that we have developed years back. We connected the people radar with the ERP system. So that challenges of the scheduling, that challenges of overtime, now we actually provide all those together to measure it. So we develop uh, a system that runs on uh, Suprema. There is a company's hardware, but now we even develop our own hardware because these hardware are expensive. We need very cheap hardware. So it, is, it has been used, and uh, here are like a lot of attendance records, movement records all those things, I'm not trying to show you all of them, I'm just quickly <laughs> brushing through. But what it's actually giving you, it's actually workforce op op optimization, uh, then patient waiting time, it's actually you're able to know, because currently we are not doing that much, but we are able to do that. Even in, in our booth, we have a small Bluetooth uh, tag, it's like this small, you can like give those people as a tag, so you will able to navigate real time location tracking system, which days, how long they have been uh, spending, or which doctor, how much they are talking or interacting with those patients. There's a huge value of doing that. I did those like time release study and uh, those study before, and I, I have actually found a lot of study I did in Swaziland by USAID and a lot of other, but it has like huge impact. If we can measure how our service rendering process is doing. We don't have a, enough measurement right now. We do some sample survey. So our system is still working a little bit in Whitbank Hospital, but still there are a lot of challenges because people don't like to be tracked. And uh, unions are very unfriendly with me, so they decided to stop everything. So, so customer care. So if you think of customer care, it's, it's like you need to understand the location. So number of places, by venue. Uh, we did not do it in here, but sometimes even like even organizer usually calls us, we plug in our analytic system with their Wi-Fi network, and then we can tell like this many of number of people came, these are the area, these are the repeated. Those people who came yesterday didn't come today. A lot of sort of analytics that we do, we, we have our two type of sensors and devices that we have been actually, it's actually designed in here. I designed and, and printed in Cape Town and manufactured back in Centurion. We have been actually doing from here, and it has like, 
all sort of benefit. It, it works with the Bluetooth, it works with uh, Wi-Fi, and also it can work with uh, cellular network, but we don't talk it in South Africa because of the regulations. But it, has, it can detect, it can locate, and it can help you to analyze. So uh, typical use cases, so we, we use, everywhere we use those sensors and devices, wherever data we picked up. We put it in an elastic search. Uh, it's a bit of technology name. Then we put it up in the Hadoop. And the Hadoop, we have Mahout and, and a lot of other ways to do uh, the uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So machine learning is not like, uh, it's not very difficult thing. What we used to do very hard way of MATLAB using like principal component analysis or neural network analysis. But now the, nowadays, even the Elon Musk had heavily funded on the open AI. So we just grab the source code and put it in our system. It's very easy to do artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence, you don't need to bring somebody from the United States or Europe to put your artificial intelligence. If you just Google it, you'll find the ways and means to do that thing. And it's not very difficult. And, and on the location, because location, I'm actually trying to show you, like right now, a system. I took a screenshot. We got like 632,000 visitors. So those visitors are coming and hitting in our system. So you need to have artificial intelligence to manage those, those records. But uh, we are currently uh, doing some proof of concept in South Africa, but this can actually improve a lot of services that we do in our hospital care, banking, and everywhere that we are trying to do. And we have also, last year, we tried to demonstrate to Watch Ambu like how you can do like location service. Yesterday, there's a professor here from Pretoria. He was saying like, he wants to solve his parking problem in, the, in Santon. So if you put those micro location, uh, location BLE technology with your app, you will easily navigate indoor. And we have been doing those things for quite some time. So it will actually, whole experience of, of living in South Africa experience will be, will be Im improved. So on the warehouse distribution, uh, this, is the, this is the method that we are putting like some sensors and some high-speed bio, bio, uh, barcode readers, and we put up some sort of dashboard in real time, and we designed this entire technology locally, so we designed the board, we designed the thing. So what actually happened, like, before designing, we tried to buy those boards uh, from sorry, Europe. Sorry, just excuse me, just sorry. Uh, could you please round up in about, okay. say, two, I mean, three minutes? Almost, I guess. <laughs> okay, so it was like almost 6,000 euros. Now we are doing locally, it's not even 5,000 rents. So other solutions, we have a lot more other solutions, the parking, uh, we have the solution on the traffic, we have been working on the traffic radar that actually, the vision radar and the location and then street lighting and other things that we do in the IoT. But most important, like if you can measure, you will be able to manage. And measurement, you need data. That data comes from IoT devices. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.